Good afternoon. Thank you for coming. Um, for this press conference, we're going to be speaking about the issue of re Iran, and we have the special rapporteur on the situation of human rights in the Islamic Republic of Iran, Mr. Javed Rahim, Raymond, sorry, um, who will make some remarks, and then we'll open it to questions. Thank you. Mr. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, colleagues, friends. Um, um, thank you for coming to this briefing. I've just presented my first report to the Third Committee of the General Assembly on the situation of the Islamic Republic of Iran. I hope um, that uh, you may have come across my message, uh, which the core message of my statement was that the challenges faced in Iran should be met by a constructive uh, response, which places international human rights law at its heart. I hope to engage with the government of Iran and build on the corridor cordial cooperation which has been extended to me thus far, despite potentially diverging views, including uh, d differing views on the mandate itself. In this context, I affirm that I will do my utmost to constructively provide the government and relevant interlocutors with information, analysis, and recommendations aimed at supporting incremental and positive change in the protection of human rights in Iran. This, I firmly believe, is a goal that we all share. I welcome the decision by Iran to amend its drug trafficking law, which has led to a marked redu reduction in the number of those executed for drug offenses. At the same time, as I said in my statement this morning, I am alarmed that um, Zainab Sikhanwan was executed on 1st of uh, October. She was the fifth juvenile offender executed this year following a trial raising numerous due processes concerns. I also recall that there are a number of juvenile offenders currently on death row in Iran, including Mohammad Kolehari, Mehdi Kazian, Mohammad Hadidi, Pur Pura Taibi, uh, Saleh Sherati. I appeal to the Iranian authorities to abolish the practice of sentencing children to death and to commute all death sentences issues against children in line with international law. The challenges facing people in Iran uh, in the past months have been illustrated by numerous protests across the country. The protests at the beginning of the year led to the death of some protesters following a crackdown by security forces. According to reports, the protests were fueled by discontent relating to falling living standards, high inflation, widespread unemployment, and the allocation of public resources, as well as perceived underinvestment and marginalization in the border regions and provinces. These are issues which I hope to address further in the context of the enjoyment of economic and social rights. I'm also worried by the possible negative impact of sanctions on the enjoyment of such rights, and will also seek to assess this impact in the course of my mandate. In the coming months, it will be important for, for the government to both address the grievances underlying the protests and also safeguard the right to freedom of association and assembly. In this respect, I remain concerned about the fate of those arrested during the protests and call upon the government to ensure that all those in imprisonment for peacefully exercising their freedom of opinion and expression are released. In my address, I also described a number of long-standing issues of concern which I, <clears throat> excuse me, which I will seek to address, including uh, the respect to the right to life and to fair trial, the recent arrests and treatment of human rights defenders, other civil society actors and lawyers, and the rights of women, foreign and dual nationals, and groups in vulnerable situations in Iran. I'm also concerned by the treatment of religious and ethnic minorities in Iran. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Is there an Ankara representative here? No? Yes? No? <coughs> yes? OK, please. <laughs> Hi. Oh, Mr. And thank you on behalf of the UN Correspondent Association. Thank you for this briefing. Um, I wanted to ask you what kind of cooperation has the Iranian government uh, given you, and has it been better than previous years? Um, and whether um, in your report you include the situation of the environmentalists, which were given capital punishment sentence or charged with uh, one of the most serious charges this week. Thank you. Okay, th thank you very much. Am I to respond? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, in my report, I have highlighted the level of cooperation that I have thus far received. 
Um, I've had two meetings um, with the Iranian uh, missions, uh, one in Geneva and one in New York. And um, I've also written to them. And uh, there has been a, a constructive dialogue, which I want to build from there on, uh, including um, um, following on t to um, my visit to Iran. So I am uh, waiting from the Iranians to have a response, which I hope will be constructive in spirit, so that we can uh, take this mandate for, forward. OK, uh, the other question was about the environmentalist. Um, as you know, uh, this issue um, was raised by my predecessor. There, there are concerns. And if you look at my report, um, I mention a number of groups that I am uh, going to be looking at in terms of um, areas of concern. And one of these uh, would be relevant to um, environmentalists and, and, and people campaigning for environment. Thank you. Yes, please. Well, could you uh, identify your news media, please? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Majid Rudaw Media Network. In your report, um, you, you talk about minorities in Iran. And, uh, and uh, if you look at the number of the executions, the number of political imprisonment, uh, you see a trend. Um, it looks like the Kurds in Iran disproportionately being, being targeted. Uh, do you agree with that assessment and uh, have you noticed any change with regard to the Iranian government's treatment of minorities in general in the, in the past year? Thank okay, uh, that's a good question. Um, as you saw in my report, one of the recommendations was to suggest to the Iranian government to see um, either to confirm or to provide me with further evidence uh, in terms of the nature or disproportionate nature of uh, ethnic minorities within the criminal justice system, including the executions that, uh, that are referred to. So that this, is, um, this is a matter of concern. And uh, I will be engaging more fully when I look at vulnerable communities as to um, uh, a possible explanation as to the disproportionate nature other possible issues of concern emerging in the criminal justice system. Thank you. Have you um, uh, as you know, uh, the mandate that I started was from July, and I'm still developing um, uh, an investigation in terms of how um, there have been or if there have been any changes in terms of ethnic minorities and yeah, and the treatment. Thank you. Uh, with the BBC here, uh, sir, you touched on the environmentalists. Uh, we now have official word that uh, at least four of them have been charged with uh, capital pun uh, ch charges that could result in capital punishment. Uh, the head of UN's environmental agency uh, has expressed concern. This seems to be one of those very urgent cases. Are you at all I I following this trend of being able to communicate case by case to Iranian government officials, or are you waiting or you know putting them all together in a report that comes out six months from now? Do you follow up on those? And the other question, you talked about meeting with them and constructive dialogue. This has been uh, the same for previous uh, reporters. They have had these meetings. They have called it constructive. But in reality, we haven't seen any material change. As you have highlighted in your report, it has actually gotten worse in so many cases. Uh, what is the point of these d meetings if at the end they don't let you go to Iran? Uh, what is the point of having these kind of dialogue if there is really no change? Is it, w will there come a time <coughs> where a special reporter can turn around and say, t tell, the, tell the real story that the Iranian government is just not actually listening or taking it seriously? The, and the third, I'm sorry to ask the third question, but... Um, it also you touched on BBC Persian and my colleagues who have been have been targeted. Uh, are, are you able to communicate to other delegations that this is not just about Iran? If this method of going after people's families become precedent, precedent, then you'll see other journalists across the world being targeted, even if they're not in that country, by going after their families. This is this is a, a, a step that goes far beyond the borders of Iran. The actions of the Iranian government. And last, you did talk about it in your report about the impact of sanctions. Are, are you at all able to communicate with the U.S. government whether they, they are serious about 
opening humanitarian or allowing humanitarian channels for food and medicine to get to Iran, that these sanctions wouldn't have the kind of uh, negative impact that you talked about in your report as well. All right. Thank you. So there are <coughs> there are four questions. So um, uh, I'll start with the dialogue. Uh, as I mentioned, I am, uh, and that's part of my mandate, to um, work with the Iranians uh, because they are the, the, the key um, party in this. Uh, so it is essential that I, 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 I make a, a sincere effort to build a constructive dialogue. And so far, I have, uh, in that sense, I have... Um, discussed issues with the Iranians, uh, I have had meetings, and they have responded to my report. So uh, I think it is important not to, uh, in any sense, uh, have this feeling of complete disconnect. It's important. Iranians um, um, have, a, um, have a role to play in, in, in the mandate that I work on. Uh, of course, there are um, other interlocutors as well, but um, I am, you know, I'm quite committed to working with the Iranians and uh, um, I am hopeful that my input would have a um, positive impact in the human rights situation in Iran. Uh, in relation to um, the BBC Persian, uh, again, it's a matter of quite serious concern. My predecessor, late Asma Jahangir, um, had, had uh, conducted research and, and had written um, this matter in her report with uh, serious um, uh, you know, uh, raising serious issues of concern. And I, I echo her um, position that targeting journalists in this manner and um, harassment and, uh, you know, the uh, sanctions against freezing of their assets is, um, is, is a serious threat to freedom of expression and opinion. And that um, action must be taken. And um, it will be one of my uh, areas of uh, work in my mandate to see how I can um, how I can protect journalists within Iran and uh, protect uh, freedom of expression or opinion um, about the environmental concerns. Again, these are c concerns which are building up quite significantly, and in our areas of um, investigation, I am uh, I'm committed to looking at it in further depth. I know my predecessor Asma had um, mentioned in her report. Um, and I will be following it up um, uh, from all sources. So on a case by case, would you go to? Um, yeah, I will be looking at case by case. But the, there are, uh, I think, um, there are also wider concerns in terms of um, uh, expression, opinion, and, and environmental issues. So, yeah, th this will be case by case, but also the impact on campaigners, for example. Yeah. On the subject of sanctions. Um, uh, again, it's a it's a matter uh, uh, to to the extent that it involves my mandate, which is specifically on human rights. Uh, how any sanctions uh, would have an impact on uh, economic, social, and cultural rights, um, dwelling on to civil and political rights. So I will be looking at it uh, in terms of the review, uh, and I I need to engage with the government and the relevant interlocutors to have a fairer picture, and I shall be, you know, I, um, in, in my future reports, I, sh I shall be looking at in more detail. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So I have only two questions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the first is, do you consider a mandatory hijab wearing to be a violation of human rights and therefore the incarceration of people who refuse to uh, cover their hair violation? Secondly, uh, I, I, as you know, let's move a little higher on the uh, bird eye here. Uh, can you compare the reaction of the authorities to current uh, uh, the, uh, demonstrations and uh, anti regime uh, 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 responses to that of the Green Revolution? I mean, is there more or less, fewer, more violations than there were in 2008? Right, okay. So, <clears throat> um, look, in terms of uh, hijab, I'm, uh, I'm strictly working on the position under international human rights law and on women's rights law. And um, any form of coercion uh, 
on women, uh, I think, uh, violates their rights. So enforcement and, um, you know, enforced uh, dress code thereby um, is contrary to international human rights law. And in, in that context, I, I will respond to, you know, any, any state which um, has a particular policy uh, on where it sees um, what dress code women should have, uh, hijab or not hijab. Um, in relation to protests, um, again, the position is still unfolding. As you know, since December of last year, uh, protests started and they were quite spontaneous. Uh, we are reviewing consistently um, uh, the developments, uh, but in some areas uh, it is quite concerning. Uh, there have been you know, serious instances, including deaths, out of these protests. So I am following it quite carefully and seeing how, how it uh, you know, unfolds. Thank you. Yes. Hi, Helen Corbett from DPA, German Press Agency. I wanted to follow up on the impact of sanctions and ask if you could go into a bit more detail specifically about what you could see happening as the US sanctions come back into force. What is kind of the worst case scenario? What specifically could be impacted on people's lives? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I'll be happy to answer your question, but I, I must preface it with uh, my mandate. So my mandate is uh, relating to the human rights situation in Iran and how it will, how it could potentially negatively impact the human rights situation. Yeah, and so in that context, yes, uh, um, we are following the situation. Um, uh, we would want uh, a review of what is going on in terms of. Uh, the impact in, on civil and political rights, but m more significantly on economic rights and social rights, on health issues. So uh, it is pretty much um, uh, under consideration at the moment. Uh, and um, we, I will be looking at it insofar as the human rights situation of individuals is affected. Uh, I will not uh, look at the, because it's outside my mandate to look at the you know um, the sanctions in general or unilateral uh, sanctions that is uh, the role of another mandate holder. Can you anticipate what kind of effects those would have in a human rights sense? Um, as I say, um, there can be potential issues of concern, but I, I need to have further evidence, and I will be writing to to the Iranian government to uh, get me the information. So uh, yeah. So in, in terms of there are areas where it can potentially have significant impact on the human rights situation. Um, but I need to get all the facts and, and information with me. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Um, I didn't introduce myself the first time. I'm Farnas Fassi with The Wall Street Journal. Um, I have two questions. When, when you engage or have these meetings with the Iranians, are there topics that are off limits and others that they're more um, inviting and discussing? They seem, they seem to be more open to talking about drug executions and uh, are there topics that you can't really uh, bring up with them? And second, um, can you uh, give us an update on the situation of foreign and dual national detainees that um, are uh, used as hostages and um, political pawns by Iran. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> uh, in terms of the topics, again, uh, I, I would pretty much focus on my mandate, which is uh, on human rights issues. So, um, you know, to take your phrase, no, in, insofar as human rights is concerned, no subject is off the table. So, uh, you know, if, if uh, I, I have in my report and my predecessors have welcomed, uh, for example, the anti-drug uh, law, which has had impact in uh, reducing executions. But that said, there are I other issues on right to life where I am and I do engage with them as, as I did in my report on juvenile executions or, or public executions. Um, on, you know, um, other civil and political rights, uh, right to protest and freedom of expression opinion. So insofar as my mandate permits me, um, everything is included. And that's uh, 
quite a wide mandate, civil and political rights, economic, social and cultural rights, and uh, uh, any other rights that come within that frame. Yeah. I understand your mandate, but I wanted to know whether they tell you that there are things that we don't, they don't want to discuss with you, or they tell you, well, we don't want to talk about this, and what are those things? Well, I mean, um, it has to be a dialogue, you see. I mean, I, um, I'm, I'm very familiar with my mandate, so I'm not necessarily limited to, you know, uh, engagement on, on, on those issues. So I, I'm quite happy to engage with these issues which I think are important for my mandate. Um, on, the, on the subject of foreign dual nationals, again, um, I have raised it, and uh, as you saw in my report, there are references and um, there are matters of concern. And um, obviously, uh, this is a collective effort from various mandate holders, including um, the United Nations uh, Working Group on Arbitrary Detentions. So um, I am in contact with um, the mandate holders, the, um, the various UN bodies, and um, we have to work to find a resolution to these issues and to, again, have a dialogue on, on individual cases. And I'm, you know, I'm engaged with that currently. Anything further? Yes, please. You have been focused also on the situation of uh, uh, foreign workers or refugees in Iran, especially them from Afghanistan or other uh, countries in the uh, region. OK, so it was about um, r uh, refugees and foreign workers. Is that what, yeah, uh, the position? Yeah, um, I think there is, um, there is a concern and there is a recognition of the issue on uh, refugees within Iran and undocumented workers, uh, their condition, and um, particularly in relation to the criminal justice system. So there are uh, Afghan uh, refugees, for example, are undocumented. Um, so yeah, and, and they, uh, I mean, the, the consideration often comes in through, for example, criminal justice issues or uh, drug trafficking issues or minority issues. So I am, I am engaged with this issue. Uh, I have had discussions on um, Iran's ratification of the Refugee Convention, for example. Uh, so it is um, one of the areas that, that I'm working on. Okay, well, thank you very much, and we'll call it to a close. Thank, thank you, so you. Thank you.